Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Quiver Gaming Mats, which are a very, very cool gaming accessory. It's on Kickstarter right now, and I'm going to be doing a quick run through of it, uh, talk about the pros and the cons, so you can decide whether this might be worth backing, so you can get one of your own. Now, you can go check out the Kickstarter page right there by hitting the I in the top right corner of the screen or following the show notes. And in fact, this is Quiver Gaming Mats' second Kickstarter. Last year, they ran a campaign. It was very, very successful, uh, and you know, the first wave of them went out. People are really excited, and so now, this year, 2016, they're running their next uh, campaign. So you once again have a chance to pick one of these up. And to go along with that, they sent me a prototype, one of their last remaining prototypes before their first print run. And you may have noticed over the last few weeks that this has been showing up in a few of my run-throughs here and there. And so now Jen and I, we've used it for quite a bit, and I figured I'd take a few minutes to talk to you about how we have found it. And overall, I gotta say, we like it quite a bit. There's quite a few pros and a few cons. Um, let's talk about the pros first. One, it's very striking. It is a lovely looking design. In fact, actually, you go to the Kickstarter page, you'll see they have several different designs, but this is kind of their standard one, this polygonal landscape. It comes in a few different colors as well. And I mean, it's weird, you know, Jen, when she first saw it, like, ah, a big black thing, I don't want to play on a big black surface, but we both really like it. It's got a lovely, clean elegance to it. It's just absolutely delightful looking. And um, so that's really, really nice. The, you know, just the visual impact. Although, like I said, check out the Kickstarter page. They've got a lot of very cool looking designs if you're looking for something different or uh, different colors of this design. So it looks great. Now, the main uses for it, I think, are really going to be around um, dice and cards. So let's talk about dice first. The nice thing is, now this isn't going to stop dice from flying off the table. You still got to be careful, but what it does really nicely is muffle dice rolling sound. Let's do a contrast and compare. Let's pull this back. Here's what it sounds like to roll dice normally on our table. Jen hates that sound. Now me, actually, I kind of like the loud clacky dice, but I know Jen and a lot of people really can't stand all that noise. So along comes the, the uh, quiver mat and one of them goes off the table. <laughs> oh, I'm so professional. But, okay, and off it goes. So, obviously, uh, much, you know, a very dull thud. I should stop talking so you can hear it. So, Jen, very, very, very much appreciates that. Uh, so that's a huge improvement, uh, particularly if, like I said, you don't particularly like loud, clacky dice. But even more important than that, I think, is the impact this has on actually playing with cards, uh, particularly black border cards. Because if there's one problem Jen and I have playing games on our table, let's go ahead and pull this back again. Let's actually maybe even zoom in a little bit. Come here, you. Zoom in. All right. Is the uh, the whole notion of hey once the, once the, hey yeah let's play some Dominion yay I, I played a workshop that's fantastic oh I'm gonna gain a card costing up to four dollars hooray and now I can't pick it up because it's pretty much lying flush with the table and I used to have to use my fingernails to get it out and you'll notice you end up nicking the card with your fingernails because it's so hard to pull up off of a flush surface. If I had a nickel for every nicked Dominion card I've got, I mean, yeah, this is why people have to sleeve their cards because of this kind of wear and tear. This is also, just as an aside, why publishers should not make black bordered playing cards. It's so ridiculous. Don't do that. If this were a white bordered card, that wouldn't be an issue, the nicks. But heck, there's a lot of, I mean, all of Dominion cards are black bordered. So a lot of our cards are nicked up from playing on our normal table. But again, you put it on the Quiver Gaming mat, and now the thing is, this has a kind of felty sort of cover, and it's uh, got foam as well. So instead of having to use your fingernails to prick it up, you can actually just lift it up. I mean, I'm, I'm actually using the, the, I'm not even getting my nails close to it. I can pull it up easily. They come right off the table. I don't have to slide them off the table or use my fingernails. And as you can see, really kind of, you know, nick up the cards. And uh, so that is a huge improvement. Now, uh, also, some people have tables that have really slick surfaces, so cards slide around a lot. This has a little bit of grip to it, so you're not going to find cards or tiles necessarily sliding around as much if you've got a super slick table. So that's another really big improvement. But for me, this is the big thing. I mean, I film a lot of card games, and the problem is I'm always filming them one-handed because I've got a camera in one hand and I'm trying to play with the other. And so I just really rip up cards trying to get them off of this glass table. 
table. So I very much appreciate having a little bit of give so the cards are easy peasy to pick up. So that is another huge, huge advantage of the uh, quiver. Let's see. So the sound, the uh, you know, protecting your cards, the nice look. Overall, this is a wonderful product. I have to admit, I like it quite a bit. Now the backside is kind of rubber coated, so it's not going to slide around. I mean, I am literally, I, I, I cannot push this. I, I, you know, and if I try to pull it, I have to apply a fair amount of force before the whole thing even moves. So once you put it down, it's staying. And so this is a really, really lovely surface to play on. But I've been talking about the pros. Let's talk about the cons. I've got two significant ones of note. First of all, one of them has to do with this particular black polygon design, which actually I was saying, I really like the look of. Jen, we both really like the look of. The thing that bugs me about it, let me see if I can zoom in and show. Um, well, actually, yeah, you can see it. Uh, when you actually look closely, hey, just little hairs, where, where, you know, little hairs all over the place, little flecks of dust or skin or whatever it might be. This, unfortunately, this black surface tends to amplify that sort of thing. And if you're a neatnik who is bothered by such things, well, that might be an issue for you there. Let's see if I can, I mean, you can see, I mean, again, now, normally when you're playing, you're not really paying that much attention, so you're not really going to see all those little flecks and whatnot, but on a dark background like this, you know, if if you have a household with pets um, you know, or, or kids or whatever, this is actually going to be a surface that's maybe a little bit tougher. Now, you, you just need like a lint roller or something like that. I don't have one of those, but that's what I'm told. Um, you need a lint roller and this kind of stuff will pick right up. But I do have to admit, just using a washcloth and cleaning off a table is a little bit easier than having to have a special tool to clean all this off. Simple solution. I think I would not go, as much as I like the look of it, I don't think I would go for the black design. I talked to them and they're talking about actually having a cream design of this polygon, which I think would look just as nice, and then you wouldn't see all little specks of dust and, and hair and whatnot show up quite as readily. I think that would be a big improvement for me and Jen. The other con we've had, and this one's really interesting, is the smell. This has, I don't know what, is this is neoprene? It's, you know, it's kind of like mouse material type stuff. And when we first got it and rolled it out for the first time, and you know, and by the way, we rolled out for the first time after it had been shipped for 20 days to get here, all wrapped up. It laid flat immediately. It looks really great, but whoa, the smell overwhelmed us. And in fact, I ended up leaving this outside for over 24 hours to hopefully let it air out and brought it in the next day. And it still has a very, very strong smell. Now it's something that Jen and I have gotten used to, but every once in a while we just come in the room and we're like, why does it smell like wetsuits in here? And it, this thing smells. And it's interesting, I contacted the, the, the guy who runs Quiver Gaming and told him, well, you know, this is really our only problem. What's up with that? And he said, oh my gosh, that's really weird. You know, he sent out dozens of review copies of these. They've used them at conventions all over, and nobody has ever had an issue with the smell. Jen and I were the first ones who ever reported it. Um, you know, I mean, if, if you check out the Kickstarter for last year, and I assume for this year, I haven't seen the final Kickstarter page, you'll see Tom Vassell uh, from Dice Tower t raving about this, and you know, Rodney Smith of Watch and Play Game and Grey Elven Gaming. A lot of people have really signed off on this. Nobody's had a problem with the smell except for us. And so he was kind of surprised by that, but then we realized, hey, this isn't actually, he did not send me a final production version of this thing. He actually sent me a prototype, an early pre-production prototype, because he also sent me a swatch of the final. Actually, let me go ahead and peel this back up again. I might have to zoom in again. Let's see here. Woo! Right, there we go. So, this pre-production was on a different type of rubber than his final. And in fact, the rubber is, is very, very thin. It's thick enough so that I can pick up cars like I showed. But he also sent me this swatch of the final. And if you look at the swatch, if I put them up right next to each other, uh, the final is, it's not quite twice as thick, but it is, I'm, I'm not really gonna be able to show this. All right, there we go. Uh, actually, can I zoom in a little bit more so you can see? There we go. The, the final rubber is almost, I think this is one millimeter versus two millimeters or three millimeters, something like that. But anyway, it's significantly thicker. And you know, he sent me that swatch basically just so I could get a feel for what the real thing is. Because the more padding you have, the more the rolling of dice is muffled and the more easy it is to pick up cards. But there's an extra interesting side effect of the prototype rubber I've got versus the real stuff. <laughs> basically, it's super stinky. Not so stinky. The, um, I think the smell problem we've had is with this pre-production, with the, the thinner rubber. This rubber is significantly more stinky than the swatch I have of the final. So, 
Um, that might be something. If you are sensitive to smells, maybe that's going to be an issue. But as it is, this swatch, I think, is going to be perfectly fine. As long as you don't get a pre-production prototype, of which there are only like three in the world, and I've got one of them, chances are I don't think you're going to have a problem with the smell like we have had. But it is something I'm just going to mention because it has been our experience with this pre-production prototype that we've got. I expect the final version isn't really going to be an issue. And that's it, folks. That is the Quiver Gaming Mat. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, please let me know. Uh, if you want to find out more, again, go check out the Kickstarter page. Otherwise, that's it, folks. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye